All right, the title of my message this afternoon is Why We Should Hate Halloween. Why We Should Hate Halloween. And uh, the verses that I'm going to be basing the scripture on, well, actually, we've got a lot of scripture to cover and a little bit of history of Halloween. But the verses that we're going to be focused on are there in 1 Thessalonians. And it's in chap uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 4 and 5. And then we're going to skip down to verse 14. And then the, the main verse, verse 22. So 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 4 and 5 says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light, and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. And then we skip down to verse 14, it says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. And then, of course, verse 22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil, and that's what I want to focus on, is why we should hate Halloween is because, number one, you know, even though that's not the first point, but the most uh, obvious point, and we could possibly just end the whole sermon there, but we're going to obviously go in a couple points, but it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. And so the Bible's telling us here that we should abstain or not partake or not involve ourselves in the appearance of evil. As I was talking earlier today when I used this word abstain uh, to the congregation, is I was letting them know that, you know, it's sad when we were growing up, they actually told us to abstain from doing certain things so that we wouldn't create challenges for ourselves as young people, young men and women. But we don't use that term anymore. It's, instead, we create excuses for uh, going out there and doing certain things. But the Bible tells us to abstain from all appearance of evil. And the reason that I'm preaching this message, number one, I, I really haven't done a message on Halloween. But number two is, you know, this is really for our brothers and sisters in Christ who think that it's okay to just partake in this and water it down so that the children uh, or your families have something to do when everybody's out there celebrating uh, and worshiping the devil uh, directly. And so, you know, a couple of things, we're going to be skipping back and forth, and, and it's interesting because I actually printed up a, a pretty good study on where Halloween came from, and it's called The Covenant with Death and Hell. And they ba they're basing it off Isaiah 28, 15, but... The, the big thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to give you some historical facts and then some points to tie to that. And then the second thing is just show you how sad. Um, this is a Christian organization. And at the end, you know, instead of taking a hard stance, they give you some pointers on how to soul win. But it's not the way we would typically think of soul winners. It's not the way that we would normally go out there and preach to the world. And, and that's the challenge is that they'll give you some really hard truths, but then they won't stand on those truths. So the first point, or before we get to the first point, let's just look real quick at the origins of Halloween. And so a couple of things here, you know, Halloween, you know, it began over 2,000 years ago amongst the Celts and their pagan priests called the Druids. And a lot of people will take that word as Celts, but really it's Celts. And their pagan priests called the Druids. And the Druids are, without question, history's king, kings, or history's king of the occult. Witchcraft, Satanism, paganism, and virtually all facets of the occult acquire instruction from the Druids. From the popular jack-o'-lantern, trick-or-treat, costumes, to the pranks, ghoulish ghosts, demons, goblins, and witches, Halloween owes its morbid uh, birth to the Druids. And what's interesting is, um, you know, they really just celebrated two specific nights of the year. Uh, Beltane, or worship to Baal, uh, or Bel, or Bel uh, Belzebub, um, and then the other one, it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it's, it's pronounced Samhain, and, it's, uh, and that is literally where we get the celebration on October 31st, or Halloween's Eve, into uh, November 1st, the Day of the Dead, and they celebrated it um, because what they considered, what they thought was that the Druids believed that during Samhain, the mystical veil separating the dead from the living open. And the Druids taught that these roaming spirits loosed on Samhain went searching for a body to possess. The frightened Celts would masquerade as demons, evil spirits, and ghosts, hoping to convince the roaming evil spirits they were another evil spirit and leave them alone. And so this dates back about 2,000 years, and then we're going to tie it to the modern-day Halloween, you know, and... Uh, 
Uh, there's a lot of, the reason that I chose this is because they actually do a lot of original source uh, study and they look at the, uh, the sources where they're coming from and they, they quote a lot of books and individuals who historians. But one of the things that, just the, the basic thing that we want to take from this is that they're honoring the Lord of the dead. And, and one of the key things that they would do is that they would have firstborn sacrifices. You know, the treat was that the Druids would go around knocking door to door and then you would have to uh, provide a sacrifice, a young and innocent child male or female to sacrifice to these evil spirits to ward them off or they would also sacrifice the their father um, or a loved one like that and then they would then uh, do incestuous things with the mother and they thought that was honoring the you know to the evil so that, you know other things that are tie associated with this this holiday is you know they, they would drink the blood of their victims and eat their flesh they would carve out the uh, the, the carcass head and they would light a candle and that's where we get the jack-o-lantern from and then eventually it became gourds or turnips or pumpkins and then they would burn the fat of the sacrificed individual I mean so this is sickening just listening to this should make you sick and the, you know the, the Druids counted it an horrible thing to eat their father's flesh and perform incest with the mothers and sisters so the first point that I want to make I wanted to give you a just a, a good foundation of where we're headed with this because unfortunately there's still a lot of Christians today who see it as innocent as long as they're not dressing inappropriate or their kids aren't you know dressing up as demons or they're not partaking in some of the evil things but re and the reality is that the Bible tells us to abstain from all appearance of evil the first point is that it, it does not conform to God's way you know the Bible tells us that that, that, that narrow is the path right and that Jesus saith I am the way the truth and the life he doesn't give you many roads or many options. He gives you one road, one option, one way. And it says in Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the first thing I want to notice is that he's beseeching us to present ourselves before God. That means that it's something that we can willfully control it says and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may be that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God and so the Bible is telling us that we need to conform not to the I mean and be not conformed to this world but we renew our mind to that what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God the Bible is telling us look don't follow along with everybody just so that you can fit in don't do what everybody else is doing and unfortunately too many Christians today think that the, in order for them to not look weird look if you're a Christian you already are different you already stand out the Bible tells us that you know if they hated the Lord first they're gonna hate us so why even try to be men pleasers the Bible tells us also that you know we, we need to conform to the renewing of the mind so that we may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God well after telling you what I just told you about Halloween I mean there's nothing good or acceptable in the perfect will of God uh, that, that that says look we can justify this act or we can water it down or we can change it up now I'm not against you know if a church decides to do something completely different on uh, you know October 31st but what happens is most times they just give you a like watered-down version of Halloween they call it a fall festival or they'll turn it into a trunk or treat and people are still dressing up and people are still handing out candy and what they're what they don't realize is that they're giving their families an opening or an uh, or a, an avenue to accept this down the road you know children are impressionable at a young age and it doesn't take a lot for them to then start to uh, question or figure out or start to think why are these things important so the first thing is it doesn't conform to God's way but the, why why should we hate Halloween well second it makes you a follower of evil and darkness you know and uh, we're gonna go here I'm gonna be going back and forth between you know some of the research that I did and, and what the Bible says about it but Halloween basically is Baal worship or the worship of Satan you know the Bible speaks about it uh, continuously over 80 90 times and the Bible tells us not to worship Baal but one of the things that it does is it conditions children at a young age to be desensitized to evil you know what's the opposite of death and darkness what's well, life and light 
You know, but the challenge is that we will preach life and we will preach light, but we seem to have this morbid fascination with death and darkness. It, you know, it's almost like the more gore that's on TV, the more uh, destruction and death that's portrayed on television, the better that the box office uh, uh, sells or the better that, you, you know, more people watch TV and do these things. It's amazing. I was, as I was doing this research, this movie's been around since I was a tiny, uh, since I was a child, seven or eight years old, I think was the first time. And I, I think before that, I know the movie came out in the 70s and the movie's actually called Halloween. And it's basically about a psychopath who goes on a killing spree and they've redone this movie over and over every few years. And what's interesting is that it doesn't matter how many times they redo the story, you know what's going to happen. It's a psychopath that's going to go on a killing spree. People still uh, go watch this and spend their money. Well, you know, the Bi I mean, the Bible, the, the statistically, the, you know, if you read uh, any statistics, it says that over 50 to 60, maybe 70 percent, depending on the poll you're reading, says that it's a Christian nation. And yet somehow it's Christian people who are given their money to go watch this uh, wicked, evil, sinful movie. You know, if you if you really take a look at it in general, it's just disgusting what we what we fall for. But, you know, 2018, I think they're redoing the movie once once again. You would think that they would run out of people would get bored of watching the same movie over and over again. But apparently it's not the case. And they've redone this. It's the same actors. Now they're like 40 or 50 years older. And people are apparently it's breaking box office hits. I, I don't know wh why why that is, but I think I understand it because if you started out young, it does make you a follower of evil and darkness. I remember uh, as a small child, my cousin didn't have a lot of supervision and my mom, every once in a while, we would be able to hang out with my cousin. My cousin is about uh, a little bit less than a month older than me. So we're the same age. I'm 38 and a couple of months and he's just one month older than I am. And I remember being at his house and being tormented, not being able to sleep later at night because he was fascinated with this movie called Halloween. I mean, I was eight years old at the time. And the one thing that it did was that it piqued my interest in gory movies. And it wasn't until I got older and I studied the Bible that I realized this is not the path to go. But you won't turn there. I've got a lot of scripture to cover today. If you go to Exodus 23, 2, the Bible says, Thou shall not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shall thou speak and cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So the Bible is telling us already from the very beginning that we shouldn't just be followers of what everybody's doing. And one of the things, this is one of the biggest holidays in this country is Halloween. As a matter of fact, a lot of people claim that this is their favorite holiday, that this is the time when, when they have the most fun. And the Bible says there, look, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Number the second reason why we shouldn't do it is we shouldn't be followers of things that cause evil. You know, people say, well, all it is is innocent. We're just going around knocking for trick or treat. We're asking for food, I mean, uh, candy. We're dressing in innocent uh, costumes. But they, what they don't realize is that uh, the Wiccan religion, uh, witches, sorcerers, uh, all these individuals, this is the time of year where they think that the spirits come out and it's time to worship and, and recruit others to their their false faith you know Romans 13 11 says and knowing and that knowing the time that now it is a high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation year than we believe the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting or drunk and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions of, for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So the Bible is very specific that we shouldn't be out there uh, walking in darkness. And when do most of the crimes occur? Just in general. In the evening. You know, when do most uh, uh, violent crimes occur? In the evening. But the other thing that we're going to realize is also is uh, during Halloween... Uh, all, you know, drunk driving, violent crimes, and actually even running over uh, uh, pedestrians increases during that time because a lot of people are, are drunk driving and there's also a lot of trick-or-treaters. But the big thing is the Bible tells us not to walk in darkness and in, in uh, evil, you know, in, uh, in the evil of this world. If you look, you know, I'm just going to make a couple of points here. Halloween 
It glorifies death in the worship of Baal or the devil. You know, so it has its roots in satanic worship. Let's keep looking on here. You know, Jesus uh, at the garden before he was arrested in Luke 22, 53 says, When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. So what, did, what is God telling them? He's saying when they came to get him, it was in the evening, and this is when they had their power. They were ruling in their power. And I'm going to skip down to verse uh, Ephesians 6, 12, and just tie this together. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So those that rule in darkness and have that power, they're the same ones that killed Jesus Christ, but they're the same ones that are looking to kill you and take you uh, down a path that you shouldn't uh, that you shouldn't follow, and eventually that path leads to eternal hell if you don't find Jesus Christ. But even if you have Jesus and we just go down that path, we can make others twofold the child of hell. So we have to be very careful, you know, with this doctrine. You know, let's look. At, let's just look at a couple more stats here. Where do we get this? How did uh, you know Samhain, this rancid, evil uh, holiday, become a giddy? Uh, Halloween, you know, what we celebrate today and the world look makes you think that it's, uh, you know, cool and sympathetic. And you notice there's a theme here. It's interesting how Halloween is, is sympathized and made to look innocent and welcoming. It's very similar to the reprobate agenda or the sodomites and the queers that make you think that they're just out there for love and that they just want to be happy and raise a family even though they can't procreate. It's very similar to that. So the devil is very wily very tricky in the way that he does things but welcome in the catholic religion and catholics uh you know under the order of pope gregory uh in 601 a.d when they were missionaries to the uh and and when i use that term loosely missionaries and when we're talking to missionaries we mean people who actually profess get people to profess or confess on the lord jesus but let's let's not get sidetracked they were uh they swarmed britain and ireland seeking masses to convert and you know the Catholic Church, anytime that they're looking for mass conversion, all it is is for filthy lucre's sake. But they were, uh, what they figured out was that they just had to water down these Druish rituals and combine them into Catholic rituals. And that's how we get the All Saints Day and then eventually it became what we know as Halloween. What's interesting is if you do the same study in, in Latin American countries like Mexico and Peru and you know where the Mayas and the Incas and the Aztecs ruled, then the Catholics, when they came through there through the Spanish uh, influence, they did the same thing. You know, the Aztecs worshipped death, and, and so do the Incas and the Mayas. And what they did was they, did, they just merged it into El Dia de los Muertos. And as a matter of fact, in the last 10 to 15 years, maybe 20 years, the U.S. has really embraced El Dia de los Muertos because of such a huge Hispanic influence with Catholic roots. And so we have to be very careful that uh, you know it doesn't influence our families you know rather than extinguish old customs the church leaders and this is Catholic Church they provided Christian and of course we're reading statistics here our definition of Christianity is very different but they provided Christian versions of them from the Middle Ages All Saints Day and All Souls Day replaced the ancient Celtic celebrations of the dead but basically uh, other than just removing the sacrificing of humans and just doing some of the things, they've kept most of the customs. And, and what's, other, what's also interesting is here, it says the Catholic festival, All Saints Day, was also known as All Hallows Day. And that word hallow was replacing saints. The day before All Hallows Eve was recognized as All Hallows Eve. Eventually, All Hallows became All Hallows Eve, Hallow Even, Halloween, and ultimately Halloween. And we know that that's a, you know, it, it's a very, hollow owes its, very life and breath uh, to the blessing of the Catholic Church. And all of it finally came together in 835 when Pope uh, Gregory just blessed it all. And he's changed All Saints Day to All Hallows Day. And then the story goes that now we're in 2018. And here comes another Halloween. And here comes another set of churches and Christians that are going to be ready to, you know, worship the devil directly or indirectly. And, you know, the Bible tells us that it doesn't matter. You know, it makes me think of the story of Saul when he, when he wanted to sacrifice and Samuel wasn't around and he thought that he would just take it upon himself to sacrifice in the name of good. Well, look, if we water down a satanic uh, religious uh, ritual, 
but we think we're doing it for good so that our kids aren't influenced. You know, God doesn't take light, light, uh, lightly to that because he wants us to follow him all or nothing. So let's go look at just a couple more verses here. Uh, in John 3, 19, it says, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So why should we hate Halloween? Because look, if we do evil, then it's likening us to hating the light. So I am, I'd rather hate darkness than hate the light. Because it says, Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. John 8, 12 says, Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Look, trick-or-treating is not done during the day. People don't dress up to go party at 8 o'clock in the morning. Every time that you celebrated Halloween, if you ever did, you know, as a young child before I was saved, all the Halloween events, even at school, were in the evening. You know, we would go to school during the day dressed up as whatever we were dressed up in. And then in the evening, that's when you go trick-or-treating. That's when you would go bob for apples. That's when they had the after-school party. That's when they had those, uh, those events. And I remember, I mean, think about how sad it is. I mean, you know, I didn't, there's a lot of things my parents did right, but I, I really believe this is one of the areas where, where they did this an injustice. I remember being dressed up as Dracula. I think I dressed up as Zorro, and it was a big deal. I remember dressing up as an, as an insane asylum patient. I had a lab coat, and I guess I was crazy. And I remember dressing up even as a, uh, the devil himself, or what people portray as the devil. I mean, think about the influence that that had in a young child's life. And my brother and my sister dressed up as whatever they dressed up as. I, I believe my sister did dress up as a witch at one point in her life. So we just got to be careful with that. Let's keep looking on here. John, uh, John 12, verse 46 says, I come, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Acts 26, 18 says, To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. 1 John 1, verse 6 says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not do tr do not and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And then Ephesians five, uh, eight through fourteen says, "For we yet, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord." And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. See, why should we hate Halloween? Because the Bible tells us that we need to not only not have fellowship, but we should reprove that. For it is shame even to speak of those things which are done in them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. And whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So... You know, that, I'm a, I, the other three points are going to, or the, other, the rest of the points are going to go pretty fast, but this is a pretty important one because we don't want to walk in darkness and evil. You know, and I'm going to go back to Ephesians 6, 12, and then we'll get to the rest of it. But it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, and then comes the powers against powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, this is a, uh, uh, a day or a holiday, and I, I mean... For us, it's not a holiday, but the world celebrates it where the rulers of the darkness of this world are doing what they, they say they're going to do, which is spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, this is not something to be taken lightly. Uh, this is something where, you know, if you do the research and, you know, I read a lot of stuff and, and looked into it. I, I wish I could go into it all. But witches love this day. You know, sorcerers love this day. The Church of Satan loves this day. This is a day where they think that they can recruit more people. They can commit more sacrifices. They can, you know, do some of these uh, ghoulish things. And nobody looks the other way because they think it's normal. You know, this is the time when uh, sexual uh, predators are at, at their worst. And, and you read the statistics and you know it's the world doing it. Because the, the world says, well, technically, none of these crimes really go up. But they do occur. What they're really saying is, yes, they do go up and they do occur because anytime you're trying to defend something that people know as a fact, 
you know, especially when it comes from the media, it's probably true that it's going on on a consistent basis. But let's go to point number three. It says, it promotes a, a love and friendship with the world. You know, the Bible tells us here in 1 John 2.15, says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And then James 4, verse 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is enemy of God. So, look, we can't partake in something like this and pretend that we're friends with God and that we have fellowship with other uh, believers and that we're doing the right thing because the Bible is very clear that this is not something to be taken lightly because if we go out there and we even try to pretend to do this on a light level if we try to justify the morality of this event what we're doing is in essence saying look we've become the enemy of God for a season and it's something not to be taken lightly let me just give you some more stuff about Halloween you know I Honestly, this is probably something that should be broken up in you know, several sermons, but for the sake of time, we're just going to cover it today. But, you know, uh, while Halloween masquerades as childish, fun, and frolic, it's serious business in the occult world. Witchcraft, Wicca, Satanism, and Paganism believe on the night of Halloween, devils and spirits are unleashed. They perform their most hideous and potent rituals on the night of Halloween. So this is a time where there's preparation for some of the most evil works that they're going to do throughout the year. You know, if, and I actually looked this book up because I was like, you know, some of these sources, I, I just want to make sure that these sources really exist. And so I looked this one up specifically. It, it's called The Pagan Book of Halloween. You know, witches regard Halloween as their New Year's, celebrating it with uh, sacred rituals. And so there's a lot of things that are going on in the, in the uh, uh, demonic realm that we shouldn't be partaking in. And just the fact that if we're just doing something with our families on that day, we're opening up our families to, or making them susceptible to maybe not possession, because obviously if we're saved, you know, I don't believe that you can get possessed once you're saved, but you can definitely get influenced in the wrong direction. And you can definitely not only be influenced, but you could then end up influence, influencing others that probably aren't saved or had the opportunity if it wasn't for the bad testimony. Let's go to point number four. It says, it is a foolish celebration with hellish ramifications. Uh, I know I went over it, but, you know, when people say trick or treat, you know, often the treat was a young, innocent child to sacrifice to the spirits in order to appease them. So, you know, I don't take that lightly. That's not something that we should just go around pretending like uh, it, it would be the equivalent. You know, I remember when uh, Trump was getting was going for uh, the presidency. And they started burning these little Trump dolls in effigy. And people were outraged and, you know, so the right and the left. Everybody had their opinion about it. But that's what we're basically doing when you're doing trick-or-treat. You're pretending or you're doing, uh, you're giving out candy in an effigy of a sacrificial life. And you say, well, you know, it's candy, it's not a life. Yeah, but you know what? If we don't take lightly to burning someone down or something down in effigy of that person, why would we then take lightly to the same act, even if it's in pretend? You know, we don't go around and promote, you know, I know the movies do, but we're, we're not doing a, uh, like a, like a child's play here. Can you imagine if we had a child's play and all of a sudden they were pretending to murder each other? The parents would be outraged. They'd leave, never show up. But somehow it's okay for us to pretend that we're sacrificing a young, innocent child to appease, you know, demonic spirits, as long as it's with... Reese's Pieces and with, you know, Hershey's bars, I don't know, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. I had to make sure there was a distinction because my wife says that they're different, Reese's Pieces and Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. To me, it's all the same. They taste just the same. But Proverbs 14, 8 says, The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. So, you know, a foolish person will mock sin. And what are the ways that you can pretend to mock sin by just pretending to do it even though you're not actually partaking in it? Well, in my opinion, you know, the Bible says if you look upon another woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her. 
Now, you maybe physically didn't take on that action, but there is a sin associated to letting your imagination roam in that direction. Well, if you allow your brain to pretend to do some of these evil, ghoulish things, then you're already partaking in some of that sin, even though you might not physically be sacrificing someone, or you might not be physically drinking the blood of a human, or sacrificing someone, or burning their fat inside of a jack-o'-lantern. You're, you're pretending. You're taking on that imagination in your mind. Point number five is that it's an abomination. You know, the Bible tells us in, in Proverbs 17, 50, it says, and, and if you guys want to go there, because I, I do have a lot of verses, but the next ones are going to be there. Uh, they're a little bit longer. If you want to be in Exodus 20 for the next point, Exodus 20, and then we're going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians. But uh, Proverbs 17, 50 says, He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just even they both are abomination to the Lord. So look, we can't partake in an abominable act. I mean, we shouldn't be doing abominable things. The Bible says if we just justify the wicked, all it does, all we have to do is just say, look, it's not that bad as long as we're not doing it. That's why I, I'm so adamant about just anything that's wicked. You know, when people say, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't stand against the sodomite agenda. If they're not hurting you and we're not hurting them, we shouldn't do it. Well, the Bible says I shouldn't justify the wicked. And he that condemneth the just, even both, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Luke 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You know, Halloween is one of those uh, holidays here in the U.S. that's highly esteemed among men. What does the Bible tell us? It's an abomination in the sight of God. And I'm going to call out a couple of local churches. As a matter of fact, we'll just start right now. Just down the road, Clay Baptist Road, and I just picked the Baptist churches, and I think like uh, Hammerley, Springwoods, Baptist Church, I forget what it's called. I think I have it right here, uh, just because, you know, I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, Springwoods uh, Baptist Church, and I know Christ Church Baptist up in the north side. These are considered independent or more conservative Baptist churches, and they're all having fall festivals. And you'd be like, well, what's wrong with the fall festival? They're just having food and candy and all that. But then they have a little disclaimer at the bottom. I looked them up on their Facebook. It says, if your kids are going to dress up, make sure they dress up in a kid-friendly uniform. Already, anytime you have to give a disclaimer for doing something, you're probably, down, you're probably trotting down the wrong path. It's not like we say, look, uh, go ahead and bring your children to church. But disclaimer, you know, we might have some inappropriate material at 9 o'clock, so why don't you bring your children at 10 o'clock? You know, I mean, we don't do that because we're preaching the whole counsel of God. There's nothing for us to be concerned about as long as we stay within the Word of God. But they're saying, look, don't let your children dress up as demons or as monsters, but it's okay if they dress up as anything else. Well, the Bible tells us specifically that we shouldn't be hypocrites or actors or take on something that we're not. You know, we should be who we are. The Bible says, let our nay be nay or our yea be yea. Go over to Exodus 20, and then we're going to be there in verse number 3 through uh, 5. You know, it's idol worship. That's point number 6. Not only is it an abomination, but it's also idol worship. I mean, they, they carved out pumpkins, gourds, turnips. You dress up as something that uh, you're not. You, you uh, take on the likeness of something. Uh, you know, one of the things that they do is, you know, they'll, they'll carve out jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, they have masks and costumes. They worship the bat, owls, and black cats. It, and I know some people like cats. I, I, if you have a black cat, I don't have anything against it, just as long as you don't think it's tied to Halloween. But this is idol worship. And let's look at what the Bible says in Exodus 20, verse 3. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, it says, Thou shalt make, shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath. So the first point in, in, uh, in idol worship is you shouldn't make. It's not just enough. Like God doesn't just say, look, don't just have other gods. Don't take time to make masks or costumes in the image of something else. Right? It says... What, what, are we, well, what is it that you shouldn't make an image of? Well, God could have said of anything, but then some people would have justified. So he was real specific. He said of any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is the water underneath. 
and says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And I, and I love that verse because a lot of people will try to tell you, and there is truth to the sins that we do as grown-ups can affect our children. But specifically, the iniquity that is visited upon the fathers, upon the children because of their fathers, are for those that hate God. Bible, God's very specific. Those that hate God, anytime you're partaking in a, in a holiday that's specifically geared towards the hatred of God, you know, God's going to visit that iniquity to the third and fourth generation. In 1 Corinthians 8, it says, uh, verse number 4 says, As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, or as in Halloween they would drink blood and the flesh of these people, it says, We know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. And we skip down to 1 Corinthians 10, verse 20 says, But I say that the thing with the, which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and, the, and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? In other words, God's saying, when you do this, even under the premise of a Christian setting, you're provoking the Lord to jealousy. And you're saying that you're stronger than you are. And you know, that's a big challenge in today's world. People think that they're better than Jesus. They think that their morality can override the morality of Christ. You know, just the fact that you would, you would even consider spending an evening doing something that the world, you know, revels in, that it's satanic worship and that they're, you know, uh, they think that this morbid uh, darkness is something to be celebrated is already thinking that you already know better than the Creator. In 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Or, in this case, Halloween. Let me just read a couple more things, and then we're going to close up. You know, I just got one more point here. Halloween has always been a night of perversion and inversion. This is the one that really struck out to me. You know, when they were doing the study, a night when where misrule and decadence masquerades as decency. Halloween's best kept secret is its romantic love affair with homosexuals or as we would call them queers. It says Halloween was the golden key that unlocked the homosexuals closet of perversion. Halloween's spirit of inversion bestowed the homosexuals one utopian night to publicly flaunt their decadence and perversion you know it's saying here Halloween has done more for the current acceptance of homosexuality than any other event uh, years of huge homosexual Halloween streets parade of gaudy perversion and decadence in New York's Greenwich Village uh, Greenwich Village or Greenwich Washington DC's Georgetown New Orleans French quarters and the infamous Castro Street in San Francisco almost single-handedly detonated the current homosexual explosion I mean it's wicked, and not only is it wicked, but it's embraced by the reprobate. You know, I remember I was about, oh man, I was like eight or nine years old, and I have, I grew up with two sodomite uncles, and um, in the town that we were living in, in far Texas, about a mile from our house, they actually, there was a, a thriving, successful satanic church. Now this is back in like 1988, 89, you know, and those things were, were unheard of, but we had one. There was one. There was a satanic church. It was a brick and mortar. There was people that went. And I mean, I, sh I guess, uh, I don't remember. I was too young. But a group of Christians, I don't know if they were Baptists or not, decided that this was not going to be uh, allowed anymore. And they burned the actual church down. And then it turned out this guy was a drug dealer. And he sacrificed animals. And he was into the occult. Eventually, they caught him. He was running away. But the, the, uh, the ashes and the remains were there. And my sodomite uncle picked my, my, my cousin and myself up. Now, thank God, God always protected us. They never abused of us or never did anything, but they did mess with us mentally. They picked my, my cousin and I and my brother, and they drove us by this satanic church, and they kept wanting to egg us to just leave us there while they drove around the block. And I remember how scared, I mean, I was eight or nine years old, so I was a little kid, and I'm thinking to myself, like, 
just the amount of torture they were putting us through because they were forcing us to do something we didn't want to do. But now that I think back, why did they, why, why were they egging us so much? Why was it so important for them to take us to the satanic place and push that? Well, because they have a, a, a perverse, uh, you know, fascination with the dead, with evil, with, with uh, this indecency because they're able to do whatever they want. And one of the things that they love is Halloween. Not only my two sodomite uncles, but you know any sodomite you meet. I, you know, I remember I, I grew up in the world. I didn't get saved till I was 25, and you know Halloween was a big. You know, and what's funny is I never liked it, but it was a big holiday. And you know, the big thing that happens when you're a child, you dress up like your favorite cartoon character, a comic book character, or uh, you know superhero, and, and you eat candy, even if you didn't deserve it. But what ends up happening is now you're conditioned to want to indulge in the flesh well when you get older it becomes you know the drinking of alcohol the dressing like a whore doing a you know participating in fornication and in wickedness and what ends up happening is when you have a vast amounts of alcohol vast amount of drugs and you're in an environment where everybody's masked and doing unseemly things well then just throw everything out the you know out the window the final point is it promotes death and hell and you know that's really the important part for us right the catholic religion uh, they merged pagan rituals for centuries, you know, not only with the Druids, but in Latin America. But for us, it's important to know this because this is where, where they lost me. So this is a really good article. And, and, you know, they're talking really good stuff. I mean, they're making some really serious hard points. And then they're, they, they end the article with saying, look, opportunities of Halloween. And they basically, the individual who wrote this says, Halloween is a soul winner's dream. Rather than going to a wicked concert or Mardi Gras or parade to witness, on Halloween they come to you. On Halloween, lost children and parents come to your door for a treat. Give them a real treat, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm all for giving the gospel of Jesus Christ, but when I think so winning, I think you're going to go door to door. And I definitely don't think that I'm going to go and do something on the devil's holiday. And if I am, I'm going to do it during the day, and I will go out there so winning, hoping that some people might not dress up for Halloween. But I'm not going to use this as an excuse to partake in their sin, saying that maybe if we just allow them to think that we're with them, then I can preach to them. The Bible is very specific with what I just gave you. But let's look at what, uh, you know, what they promote and how do you think that you're going to overcome something if all they're thinking about is death and hell. The Bible says in Revelation 14, 10, says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out with mixture in the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark on his name. So the Bible is telling us, look, if you're partaking in this, you're already sending or promoting hell forever and ever to be tormented. This is not something that we should take lightly. Even if you think it's an opportunity, God doesn't present opportunities in darkness. God will not present opportunities in wickedness. God's going to present them through the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Samuel 28, 13, you know, when, when you're talking about the occult and just, you know, the spirits and stuff, it's just interesting how it says, and the king said unto her, and we're talking about when the, you know, uh, Saul went to the sorcerer, it says, be not afraid uh, or a, a, a seer for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. In other words, there is such thing as evil spirits. There is such thing as these demonic uh, beings that can cause uh, harm and possession and even destruction, utter destruction to the soul, right? It says Matthew 10, 28, this is what we should teach. And fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So bottom line is, it, it's sad day and age, and I went through this because I had a lot to cover. I want to make sure I just had enough time to close it out. You know, even Christians believe that Halloween is bad. You know, this guy that wrote this, I don't know him from Adam. I don't know who he is. And he makes really good points. He has a lot of good research. But at the end, he's like, look, you should have a fall festival at your, uh, at your place and encourage your children to dress up as biblical characters. Well, look. If the, if the holiday itself is encouraging you to dress up to ward off evil spirits, to look like a spirit of death, why would you encourage your children to worship death? Second of all, 
Why would you encourage them to be a false testimony? You know, why would you encourage them to say, look, come here, we're going to pretend to be with you guys only to tell you something that's not, you know, God's not going to lead someone to salvation through a lie. The Bible tells us in First Titus, uh, in Titus 1, 2, you know, we use this in soul winning a lot. And, and, uh, and we tell people that God didn't lie to us, right? But in Titus 1, 2, the Bible tells us that uh, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. The point I want to make there is God says he cannot lie. How can we think that we're going to lead someone to salvation if we're being deceptive in our belief system? You know, how do we think that we're going to be in the right spirit if we're already starting off in a lie? It's, it's the same thing. I remember when I got saved from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I always tell people, you know, how do you think that you can think that you belong to the right church if it was founded on a lie? You know, God would never found something on a lie. I don't think that he wants to lead someone on the premise of a lie. Now, I think he, he wants us to go out there and soul win, but not say, hey, let's go ahead and pretend to have a Holly, Halloween uh, festival. Let's just not call it Halloween. Let's call it a fall festival or a trunk or treat. And then in the process, give the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, what kind of message are we sending? We're muddying the waters. Let's be clear in our salvation and our gospel. So why should we hate Halloween just to close out? What well, doesn't conform to God's way you know, it makes you a follower of evil and darkness. It promotes love and friendship with the world, and that makes you an enemy of God. It is a foolish celebration with hellish ramifications. It's an abomination. It's idol worship. And finally, I mean, it just promotes death and hell. And it's really the antithesis or the antichrist to what God does. And, and I'll close out with this. This is the one point that really stood out to me. You know, we promote soul winning. We say, look, if we can, and if you're able to, go soul winning as many times as you can. If you could go every day, you know, and if, if your job didn't, uh, you know, stop you and your family, you should go soul winning every day. And the Bible actually gives us presence for that. And Acts, it says that they went out daily into the temple preaching the word, right, and into the hedges and the highway. What, what does the devil ask you to do one day a year? He says to go knock doors, but you're asking for a trick or a treat. You know, so it's, you know, the devil is always a counterfeiter. We go soul winning as many times as possible to give the gospel. And the devil says, look, go out there and just pretend like you're asking for a sacrificial blood sacrifice to appease me and the devils that are around. So let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I hope that I uh, did message to this uh, study on Halloween and how evil uh, and wicked and defiling and perverse it is, Lord. Lord, help us to stand, you know, on your word and on your truth, Lord. And I pray, pray that this message resonates more with those that believe on you, Lord, and that they shouldn't even partake lightly in this event, that they should stop these false festivals, these trunk or treating, these whatever you want to call them, any, they're giving it a false name, Lord. Basically, we should just excommunicate it. We should bar it. We should abhor it. We should hate it from our lives. And Lord, help us to raise our children knowing that this is not something that they should even feel bad for missing. There's 364 days out of the year that we can do fun stuff. And if we have to miss one day of doing anything just so we tell the world we're not interested, we should do it. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to preach this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.